Hello, welcome to Outside Xbox. My name's Mike, and this delicious slice of auto porn is Project Cars, coming to Xbox One, PS4, and PC in November. There's no disputing that Forza Motorsport 5 is the big swinger on the Xbox One simulation block. It's got an astronomical budget, all the licensed cars that money can buy, and the benefit of direct access to Microsoft's technology to make it look all sexy-like. But there's a merry band of British upstarts planning on stealing the title of Xbox One's most realistic racing game. They might not have the resources that Turn 10 have, but what they do have is an army of racing game fans helping to steer development in the right direction. The Cars in Project Cars stands for Community Assisted Racing Simulation. But hey, creative director Andy Tudor, what does it actually mean? It's like, what's that, um, that paint tin? That's the Ron Seal. You know, it does exactly what it says on the tin. You know, the game has been made by the community. It is a racing simulator. There are many other racing games out this, you know, this year. Ours is the only one which is a kind of Forza experience mixed with the kind of uh, level of fidelity and controls and features that you know maybe if people have seen on maybe like PC sims that we're finally bringing to Xbox. So given that this community of racing simulator fans has had direct control over what's been prioritised for the game, what was their number one request? The number one was weather. Like people wanted weather, like by far and above, it was the number one requested community feature. And we've wanted to get to weather for a long time. Um, when you start thinking about weather though, you know, when it starts to rain, well, if it starts to rain, you're gonna need to maybe change your tires or something like that. How do you even know it's gonna rain? You know, you might need like a pit engineer or something like that. So even though it's a great idea, like the implementation of that, like kind of snowballs into many other things that you actually need to do. You know, but now, you know, we've actually done them, you know, so people were saying, yeah, we want weather. OK, well, if you want weather, we're going to blow it out of the park. We're going to do dynamic time of day and weather. So it means that, you know, it'll be raining like it'll be clear on like lap one, like, you know, lap two. It actually starts to you start to get messages from your pit engineer like, oh, it looks like there's a five percent chance of rain. And then it actually starts to rain. And then when it starts to rain, like you start to slide and aquaplane and puddles start to form. And then you go into your pits. We have fully animated pits that change your tires and everything get back out there so like there was I think Madden once said like it's if it's uh, it's everything you see on game day you know it's very similar with project cars you know everything that you would see on a race day like here all the functionality and also like all the atmospheric stuff you know it's in project cars asking for dreadful weather which means you have to drive more slowly simulation racing fans are a funny bunch there is an explanation though and that is that the priority for most of them is unswerving realism if it happens in real life on a racetrack they want it replicated What's the point of pretending to be Lewis Hamilton if you aren't dealing with everything he has to deal with in the cockpit? Well, apart from your teammate running into you on the first lap, they can leave that bit out. But if it's that realistic, doesn't it mean it's just for the hardcore simulation heads who play their games wearing fireproof underwear just in case? There are other games out this fall, you know, which are more in the kind of arcade -y action um, space. Um, when you play Project Cars, you know, you're going to have to break, you know, you won't be jump, you won't be hitting arm codes and like sliding around the corner and things like that. No, you know, it is a realistic racing game, you know. So if you love Forza, you know, and unfortunately there's no Forza Motorsport out this particular year and you're still craving that kind of fix, then yeah, you know, Project Cars is the one for you, especially because it's got like a bunch of features in there that maybe uh, the competition doesn't. Um, but then equally, as you said, like some people think that that means it's going to be hard. You know, the word simulation might put some people off and it doesn't. A simulation just means that it's accurate. It just means it's authentic to the real life experience. You know, it's one of the first things you'll do when you load the game up is it's going to ask you what your kind of level of skill is, what your level of challenge you want out of the game is. And that's going to change the handling model. It's going to change the AI competitiveness. It's going to change the um, like the on-screen guides that the game has, you know. So, you know, if you are like my, ne my niece or nephew and you're unboxing a game on Christmas Day, you can dial it right down. And, you know, it'll never be like my Mario Kart, right? But it'll be something that you can sit down and play and you're maybe not sliding off everywhere and you're, you can have a great experience, a more casual experience, you know. But then equally, guys, you know, like ourselves, who are racing fans, we have played many, many racing games over the years, you know. We can dial it to something more immediate to what we like, and then we can go into all the features that functions afterwards, and we can change it, you know, dial things, some things up, some things down, turn traction control off, turn, turn stability control off, things like that. And therefore, that means that the game is completely accessible to everyone. We call it player tailoring, because we want it to make sure that the game is basically bespoke to you. All right, you've heard the spiel, but just how close to reality is the game? Well, you might have noticed that rather than the basement of a London hotel, this chat with Andy Tudor is taking place at the Brands Hatch racing circuit in Kent. So we stuck a camera on the head of Oliver James Webb, an actual real-life racing driver, to compare what he sees from the cockpit with an early PC version of the game.
As you can see, all the corners go the correct way and the buildings are present and correct, but it's the little details that are almost more important. Stuff like where the curbing begins on the approach to a corner is a visual reference point that real racing drivers use to get consistent fast laps. Of course, all that realism is no fun if there isn't a huge dollop of content to play with. Fortunately, Project Cars promises a massive track list on release, a wide variety of racing machinery, and even real-life events like the Le Mans 24 Hours. We asked what the philosophy was when the team was out chasing licensed content. I think it comes from uh, the culture that we have in our studio and the way that people talk about cars in real life. I mean, there are many different types of car. There are, you know, we've got some uh, muscle cars going around uh, right now. You know, muscle cars aren't for everyone, you know. Um, some, I, I was brought up on Formula One. You know, other people in other countries may prefer rally, touring car, you know, things like that. Americans, you know, with like NASCAR and IndyCar, things like that. So I think, you know, when we talk about cars and motorsports in general, we all have such varied variety of like what kind of like is our passion. But that was really where it kind of came from. We didn't want to just do street cars that you kind of tuned up and then converted into race cars. That didn't feel, well, it felt like it had been done many, many times before. Also, it didn't feel like real to kind of the real experience. So when it came to like approaching like licenses and looking at what kind of motorsports we wanted in there, we wanted a, few, a, a, a global scale. So, you know, we've got kind of things that emulate, you know, like the Renault Clio Cup, for example. But then equally, we've got stuff in there. We've got ovals in there, you know. Um, so and we've got carts as well, you know. So there's something in there for everybody. And that's kind of generally our like philosophy. You know, we want a global range of like tracks to visit. We want a global range of like players who can actually jump into the game. A huge like variety of cars in there and things like that. And then, yeah, this kind of like this this whole idea of like a sandbox experience for players. So there you go, Project Cars is not only the most realistic racing game this year, but possibly the most realistic racer on Xbox One, period. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments if you think Project Cars can take on Forza 5, and like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, because I am a huge nerd for this stuff. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Outside Xbox.